miss you. Sometimes when I'm in the shower, I just get to think. And today I've been thinking about a physics problem that's been giving me a lot of trouble. Come take a look. In this problem, we try to see how far off course our spacecraft near will be one day after it passes through the field of gravitational force of the asteroid Matilda. Now, Matilda weighs 5.25 e to the 17 kilograms. And that is based off the volume times the density of rocks on Earth. Now, the spacecraft will be traveling at 10,000 kilometers in the X direction. And as it comes closer, Matilda will pull it in. And as it leaves, Matilda will still be pulling on it. But from these diagrams, you can see that as it comes in, the force will make it speed up. And as it leaves, it will slow down in the X direction. So the only change we will be looking at in this approximation is the Y component. Now, Matilda is 12,000 kilometers away from the path where the spacecraft will pass. So we're going to use this distance as our approximation for the continual force across the distance. For the approximation, we're going to use 250,000 meters in either direction, as beyond that, the gravitational force will be insignificant, and it will not have as much, it will have barely an effect on the spacecraft's Y direction. Come over here. Force of gravity is equal to G, the gravitational constant, times the mass of near times the mass of the asteroid divided by the distance between them, which in this case we're only looking at the Y component. And that will give us the distance is the shortest distance between them and the y component. So we're going to have 6.7 e to the negative 11, which is the gravitational constant, times 805, the mass of near, times 5.25 e to the 17, the mass of the asteroid, divided by the distance between them, which is 1.2 e to the 6 meters squared. And we are going to get, if you plug it into your calculators, you will get 0 0.0197. Now this is only the magnitude of the force, and in this approximation, it will be pulling the spacecraft downward. So you're going to need to make this negative. So when you look at the momentum principle, where P final is equal to P initial plus the force, net force times the time duration delta t. Now, since we're looking at 500,000 meters and the spacecraft is traveling at 10,000 meters per second, it will only take it 50 seconds to get across. Now, using this force of 0 0.0197 newtons, there will barely be a change in the velocity, average velocity over the time in the y component. So it will not change the gravitational force at all, um, considering how large a distance we're dealing with and how small a change in distance it would be. So we're going to take 0 0.0197, noting that it's negative because it's pulling the spacecraft down, times 50 seconds, and we're going to get negative 0.985. And this is the this is the uh, net change in momentum. So now the momentum after this is negative 9.85 in this in the negative y direction. And now to get the velocity, we need to divide this by the mass of near, which is 805 kilograms. And we're going to get 1.22e to the negative 3 negative. So that is how fast near is going in the negative y direction. And then we take this and multiply by the length of a day negative 1.22 e to the negative 3 times 60 seconds and 60 minutes and 24 hours and you will get negative 105.408 meters. So near is going to be negative 100 meters approximately lower than it should be. I'll thank you for my shower math.